Welcome back to Steve's Project Car Garage. My name is Steve. Today we're going to start cracking in on this here overdrive. This is a Laycock and Normanville uh, D type overdrive. And uh, this is one that I got off of that gearbox that I purchased from uh, my buddy Jeff. And so we're going to go ahead and crack into this thing, get it disassembled, and then put together a parts list so we can go ahead and make an order and get this thing rebuilt. So grab yourself a cup of jitter juice and stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so I have the uh, manual over here on the iPad. This is uh, the original shot manual from Triumph, and uh, this is for the Vitesse and the Spitfire, I believe. And uh, anyways, it covers the uh, the D-type overdrive. And so the first thing that it talks about doing is uh, going ahead and removing these four uh, nuts that actually hold down this uh, locking bridge. There's supposed to be locking tab washers underneath each one of these, and there is not. So that tells me that someone's already been in here. So we're going to start with a 7 16 and we're going to just back these guys off slowly. All right, so we're going to remove these bridge pieces. Okay, and then we're going to also remove uh, these springs the bias springs. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the solenoid. So the solenoid uh, rubber boot was pretty trashed. Um, I don't think we can get just the boot by itself, but I have tested the solenoid and the solenoid does work, but this wire is pretty frayed right here. So I may end up just replacing the solenoid just for Good measure they're about 40 bucks so um yes it's not cheap but i think it's a smart move so we're going to remove these two screws that hold the solenoid in and those little star washers that go along with it so now it has me loosen those but it doesn't have me actually remove the solenoid which is a little bizarre but it wants me to go ahead and now start progressively releasing all of these nuts so as you release it you need to release it gradually and across the board evenly so that way it slowly releases the actual casing so let me see if i can get to a better angle and we'll start doing that all right so in an attempt to save my workbench top um i went ahead and put it in this box and also i did go ahead and pull the solenoid off um, so that, that came off nice and easy so let's go ahead and see if we can just get these guys to loosen. Yeah, now I have to try to do that. All right, we're just going to work our way around and just slowly start loosening these guys on up. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, so now that we have those off, um, the guidance does say to lift up the front casing and to remove it from the brake ring. So I think that because uh, I'm, I'm worried there's going to be things that are going to you know, drop out, uh, we're going to go ahead and just flip it over. I'm going to try to do it that way. Can't seem to get the case to split though. There we go. There's these little like, looks like spots that are made specifically just for prying. And so just kind of putting a screwdriver in there and wedging it seems to be working. This way you're not messing up any of the mating surfaces. Yeah, felt something definitely released there. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So now, What it wants us to do is 
If the brake ring remains with the gear casing, tap it off gently. Well, it didn't remain with the gear casing because this is the gear casing from what I understand. So it should be good there. Remove four clutch spring, clutch release springs. So that's going to be these guys. And withdraw the clutch sliding member, complete with thrust bearing, thrust ring, retaining plate, and sun gear. Okay. Well, there's the clutch. There's the center of the sun gear. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pull up the sun gear. And now we're going to be left in here with the annulus and then the uh, output shaft. So this is where it has a stop for the moment and we're gonna start working on the top part again. All right, so now that we've got the rear partially disassembled, we're gonna work on removing the operating relief valve. All right, I needed to just bring it over to the bench to get a little better grip. But we're gonna go ahead and remove this. Okay, so we have the top. There's a spring, a plunger, and a ball. Which are right here. I'm just going to keep that all together. I'm going to see if I can try to find a small telescoping magnet to be able to pull out what's left in there. Now this is this is quite interesting. So in here it says to. Uh, using a small piece of wire to use extreme care to not damage anything, uh, remove the valve that's in here. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get a small piece of wire and just try to do that. I got some good strong um, like picture hanging wire. We'll see if we can use that. I don't see how a piece of wire can remove that. So looking at it further in here, it looks like it drops down and is up against here. So I might be able to pop it out when I get further in. So for the time being, we're just gonna hold off on proceeding with that because I don't wanna hurt and damage anything. Okay, so now the next part, this is uh, gonna be the pump. So it wants us to remove the pump. And so the pump um, is, I, I've watched a, a couple of videos on doing this. So the pump is located right here. I've already loosened the, the bolt for it. I've actually loosened the nuts on all of these pretty much. But we're gonna go ahead and remove this. We're gonna use our little magnet. Just remove the spring. That spring may actually need to be replaced too. I'll have to measure the distance of all the different windings, but looking here, I think that these windings, that might actually be all right. I thought the the windings were a little mal-gapped, but they actually look pretty decent. So that spring is probably just fine. All right, so once you get the screw and the spring out, you're gonna be faced with this. And so I'm trying to get it to focus, there we go. So in here, there's a little um, housing that you have to remove. And it's got two flat sides on it. And um, essentially you need to make a tool to be able to go ahead and extract this. Um, there is a Churchill tool that's specific for it. Good luck finding it. But uh, what I'm gonna try to do is see if I can just fabricate something, maybe using an old socket or something to go ahead and put in there. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can get this guy extracted. All right, so here's what I fabricated. I took an old socket and uh, I just ground it out to be about 10 and a half millimeters thick gap. And uh, we're gonna see if this works to just kind of remove this guy. Got a bite. There we go, that was it. Sweet. Now we should be able to just back this out. And 
use a little magnet here. And there we go. All right, so in here is a bearing or a little ball. Okay, I'm gonna put that over here for the pump. And what we need to do is we need to measure the size on the thread of this bolt, because we're gonna actually have to find a bolt that has the same thread to go ahead and extract the actual pump itself. Let's see if there's anything else that's in here though that I should pull out. I don't think that there is. All right, so let me go ahead and see if I can find a bolt that's similar to this size, because we're gonna have to make now another tool to be able to go ahead and pull the actual pump out itself. All right, so now the next thing that we need to do is to uh, remove the, uh, the pump non-return valve body. And so to do this, um, you actually need a 7 uh by 20 bolt and uh, an old socket, maybe a couple of washers. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in and we're gonna screw into the hole that held this guy here. And we're just gonna slowly keep tightening it and that's gonna extract the actual body out. At least it, th it should in theory. So let's give it a try. There we go. Now I can feel it starting to pull. Let's see if I need to go ahead and add some more washers. Many, many minutes later. Alright, I gave it a couple of good cranks there. I had to lay it down. It's a little easier to do laying it down. Let's see here. It's pulling it out, just slow, slow going, but it is working. It's pulling it. You can now see that the, the body is flush. It's actually sticking out a little bit more. So what I'm doing is working. It's just being slow. Ooh, this just fell out a nice little chunk of metal okay we're gonna take note of that that was in the bottom of the pump housing okay and this is what we just extracted There's a little piece of metal in here. Now, if you remember correctly, this uh, gearbox chew a tooth badly and there was broken bearings. And so I'm not entirely surprised to see chunks of metal in here. And so uh, for a period of time, I was thinking I wasn't going to extract the, uh, the pump housing, but I'm glad I did because uh, we don't need pieces like that floating around in here. So now we should be able to just pull up on this. And this is the actual pump. So what this pump does is it rolls along um, a lobe. I can't, I'll swing you over. So this, this roller ball rolls along this lobe in the transmission. 
and essentially just goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and it just that's what pumps oil into the overdrive these seldomly fail um, but it's good to clean them and make sure everything is free of damage and debris such as pieces of gearbox all right so now the next thing to remove is going to be the uh, plate that covers the filter housing so we're going to go ahead and just see if we can get that out of here rather curious to see what's hiding in the filter So I loosen this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take it off and see what's inside. Oh yeah. There's like a gauze filter that's in here. I managed to tear that coming off, but I'm sure that's a part that we will replace anyways. Put that off to the side. And there's the filter. Now I need to figure out how to get that filter out. Wow, holy cow. So inside of the filter is pretty gnarly, but check this out. This is inside of the filter housing. Look at all of this. Look at that. That is some sludge. Wow. Okay. I'm guessing that that is a lot of, uh, yep. That is probably a lot of just clutch material. curious if this is all that ferrous material that was in the bottom of this thing because it's got quite a glean to it. And so there's actually three of these. Look at the color on this stuff though. Holy cow. Look at the color of my hands. <laughs> That's not going to come off easily. Wow. Okay. So we have three of these guys and these are magnetic I can that's interesting and they're a soft material too but they are they're magnetic whether they be from the, all the crap that's on there or what I'm not sure I know that there's supposed to be magnetic filters in here and I'm guessing that's what these are and boy have they done their job look at that there's a lot of ferrous material in here. I went ahead and I cleaned up my hands and uh, obviously I threw on some gloves, but there's a lot of junk in here. And it's surprisingly quite ferrous, which uh, really makes me think that this is all probably clutch material. And with that being said, with the amount that I've pulled out, I'm going to go ahead and just replace the clutch or the... Uh, sliding member i was on the fence about it before but i think seeing everything that's come out of here uh it's it's a wise move it is false economy as the manual would say all right i'm going to try to remove this brake ring much like before. This just comes off using those pry points. gone this deep with it there's no point to not take this apart so we can get it nice and clean all 
when looking at it, can't really tell if there is a right, correct way for this to go or not. It, there is, okay, so just as note for myself in a later video, when looking at it, this is the top, that's the bottom, okay? You can see how this is uh, caved out. This is actually where I think the, okay, so the annulus, annulus goes inside of here. Yeah, all right. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the adjuster plate. There we go, nice and clean in there. It's interesting. So I gotta look at, uh, find more information on this, but I almost feel like something here is broken. I'm not sure, I'll have to take a look. But that's loose for one, but then also this guy, it looks like it should have like a little pivot arm in there, but there isn't. Let's see, this is the operating piston. I guess maybe it's not broken necessarily, but it just feels like there should be something else here that goes along with this. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. So we'll find out more about this, get this gasket of course replaced. We got our drain plug here. The manual talks about removing the operating pistons, which are right here. Um, I don't have the tool to remove those, and uh, I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to be able to fabricate said tool. Um, so, again, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. If you know uh, if this is worth removing or not, let me know. Um, but we might be getting almost down to where it's kind of time to call it quits as far as stripping this back any further. I don't want to get too far into this and then find out that I can't put it back together. In here we have another spring. A valve. There's a series of washers in there. There's like two little tiny thin washers and then two thicker washers on this. It's quite interesting. The amount of little tiny metal bits that have come out of this has just been absolutely profound. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking apart the clutch or the sliding member. I was gonna go ahead and try to save this, but after pulling all that material out, I think I am gonna go ahead and get this uh, replaced. Um, there's a guy by the name of John with Quantum Mechanics, and uh, he relines these as well as rebuilds all of these. And uh, so for $275, I can get a replacement, and I think I'm gonna go for it. Um, I think a lot of that murky material in there was all clutch member or clutch material, so, um, I think it's smart to just replace it. So to do this, I'm gonna start by removing this circlip, which holds the sun gear in place. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know how much I absolutely adore circlips. Okay. Like that. And we get this retaining clip. There we go. Got it started.
think the big thing with these clips is to just kind of get it started. And then once you get it started, it should start to come up easily. And now, sun gear comes out. And give it a nice full inspection. But, I mean, preliminarily, it looks good. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get the gear puller out. I'm gonna pretty much put a bar across here and then grab a hold and then just start pulling. So let me see if I can get some stuff put together to pull this apart. All right, so I need to bring it back on over to the, to the vise to get an extra grip on it, but there we go. Got this off. I'm gonna use uh, the press probably just to remove the bearing. I may as well, I got the press. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. All right, well, that's where we're going to end it for this video. So uh, stick around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell to get those post notifications because we're going to keep uh, working on this guy. I got a bunch of uh, parts I got to order. I still have a bit more uh, disassembly to do as well. But uh, I was just going through the video and we're almost at, uh, you know, 30 minutes. So I figured we'd go ahead and press pause for now. And remember, when working on overdrives like this, follow the directions and don't be that dreaded previous owner. Cheers.